In the first month of the Islamic New Year, Shiite Muslims hold a commemoration called Ashura to remember Prophet Muhammad's grandson Hussein, who tirelessly fought a battle in Iraq in a land called Karbala. One way in which they express their feelings to remember this is through eulogy reciting, where the reciter tells the story of Ashura in a form of poetry through singing in a mournful voice. This film explores the art of a eulogy reciter through his reviving of Islamic thought, giving us a glimpse in his life of what it means to remember Hussein through his recital. Eulogy reciting is a, is, is a, is a form of poetry recited to a tune. For the what usually happens is, is that one person gets up, he has lines of poetry. People um, would gather around and he would read in a way where it's a, it's a, it's a, certain, it's a certain tune to it. Muharram is a time where you remember the events of Karbala and you remember the tragedy that Imam Hussein went through. 1400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad's grandson Hussein fought a battle against Yazid, the Islamic ruler of the time, who was a tyrant and oppressor. He took with him 72 of his companions and family and battled against Yazid's army of thousands to stand up for his rights. All of the men in Hussein's army were killed, while the women and children were held as captives. This historic event is much remembered in the morning month of Muharram, the Islamic New Year where Shiite Muslims from different cultures and backgrounds congregate to remember this important leader. What inspired me to recite, well, my mum is actually a eulogy reciter and my dad is a lecturer, uh, a religious lecturer. So I grew up in a household where eulogy reciting, um, commemoration of, 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 of the deaths and, uh, and the commemoration of the, of, the, um, of the births, it was just drummed into my head. One of the days, about six years ago, my, 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 my father told me, listen, why don't you get a poem ready? I'll tell the host that my son wants to read something, and then we'll see what happens. So I went with him, and then my father told the host, uh, the host my son wants to read a couple of lines of poetry. The host was more than happy. So as I started, I felt this is really comfortable for me. I, mean, I, wasn't, I was nervous, but as I got up, I just I recited. See, some poems, they, they, um, in order to gain, if, because for example, if you gain the audience's attention, they will then be affected by the words. So when they start reciting with you, th that means they're, 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 their attention is with you, with me. Um, so the more I get them to recite with me, the more I know that their attention is good. And I can, I, I can, I can sort of, I can measure the attention levels by how loud the, the, the reply is. <laughs> Muhammad is, is more concentrating on the 10 days. Now these 10 days, I, I, I'd give up studies, I'd give up whatever I'm doing. I took, I'd take two weeks off holiday, uh, off, of, of work, just so that these 10 days I'm free. So that I can fully exert everything, every energy I have to the cause of, of, uh, of the remembrance of Imam Hussein through eulogy reciting. Hussein is seen as a central figure within the Shia faith. The Ashura epic and the method of martyrdom of Hussein is a turning point in the history of the Islamic belief. If you look from an emotional aspect, you see one man, his sister, his sisters, his, his daughters, his wives, his brothers, his companions and friends, all were slaughtered at the hands of Yazid against, narrations say, 72 against uh, an army of thousands. 
So you see this, this, this Islamic stand, this, uh, this also political stand, was a stand against oppression and against tyranny. Now these, the, this, this time of Muharram, is, it, it affects all humanity. It connects with all humanity. Any person can be connected with Imam Hussein and the tragedy of Karbala. Beating their chest is a, is a, is a, is a type of mourning. Okay, you have, for example, um, mourning could be, for example, uh, crying. Now you see, for example, when mothers, they lose their child, they start to beat their heads, they start to rip their clothes, and they start to scream uh, over their child. Now, people beat their chests as a remembrance, a little, a little remembrance of what, the, how, or how the pain was felt during what happened in Karbala. Um, so beating the chest is just a, it's a type of moment. And we're here today to commemorate him and tell the world about him and also learn the little lessons of what he did in Karbala, which was a school taught in a couple of hours, which has in itself spread years and millenniums worth of lessons for humanity to live by. Not just Muslims, but all of humanity, from truth to holding good values, to standing up for the poor, for the weak, to not standing up to, to, to standing up to the oppressors and not standing for oppression. To have an effect on the audience, of course, is very spiritually uplifting, especially when uh, if, if, the, if the reciter knows exactly what he's doing uh, and knows how to affect the reader. So during this month, it's not only the, prophet, the, the grandson of the Prophet we commemorate, it's also other people. So it's a month of, of, of sadness and it's a month of, of literally being serious with yourself. I do look forward to, to that time of year because it, for me it's like a, not a, it's like a refueling of, uh, of spiritual nourishment.